Coming up, we take a look at Dynamics 365 for marketing, now generally available, which enables you to build marketing workflows to identify prospects and deliver targeted experiences, spanning the automation of email communication outreach, built-in tools for event management, insights across all marketing activities, and more. joined once again by Eric Bucock for the Dynamics 365 team. Welcome back. Thanks so much for having me back. So for the folks watching at home, they might not have looked at Dynamics 365 for a while now. The service has really evolved substantially with new apps, experiences, things like Microsoft Relationship Sales, Connected Field Service we saw with Ryan a few months back, the talent and retail, and now marketing. It's pretty impressive. It's really been a tremendous wave of innovation just over the past 18 months. The shared cloud architecture that we've adopted has been huge for us, not only in terms of the pace of innovation, but in terms of how we've been able to take advantage of native integration across Office 365, LinkedIn, the Office Graph, and Azure to reason over all this data using AI, machine learning, big data analytics to deliver richer insights and more intelligent experiences. So we leverage these connected services really across the fabric of Microsoft services, whether we're delivering search and productivity experiences or amping up things like information protection capabilities. At the end of the day, we're really connecting to signals and making use out of those signals. Absolutely. For Dynamics 365 as a business application, this is important to bring together the signals from the applications regularly leveraged by business users. For example, signals collected through customer interactions logged in Dynamics allow us to score the strength of the relationships with the customer in order to focus on the right deals, track emails sent and response rates, as well as take next best actions, leveraging services like LinkedIn to really expand your network. So another way to think about this is really as we're capturing insights then from customer interactions, that becomes then the basis of Dynamics 365 for marketing. That's correct. Dynamics 365 for marketing includes an Azure-based data source that can scale to support very large volumes and track with high performance a wide range of scenarios to support interactions and insights. So why don't we go on a journey here and actually see all of this in action. So if you're new to marketing, this might be another insight into how that process works. Absolutely. So let's take a look. The idea is to give you a turnkey but customizable marketing automation solution to help marketers find and nurture more sales-ready leads, connect sales and marketing, automate processes, and make smarter decisions to maximize ROI. So here, we're going to set up an event uh, at a North American manufacturer to launch a 3D printer. So within Dynamics 365 for marketing, we're going to start on the dashboard. And right away, let's actually start by creating a customer journey. So we're going to select the email marketing template. There's predefined templates for all these different types of marketing uh, journeys. Here you'll see a visual flow of really the engagement uh, that are set, scheduled for this particular journey. A very easy drag and drop process allows me to bring in a survey so that when uh, an event is triggered, we can then send a, a survey response to the customer. Really for the purposes of this demonstration, we're gonna focus on targeting our segment and personalizing the email communications that we're gonna send. So this is a visual query designer that allows me to define my target audience. I'm gonna pick contacts that are in the U USA as well as contacts in Canada, their annual income over $50,000, and additional data points. We can also see a visual flow of that same query and where the data intersects to be able to understand the, the data set that we're pulling at. And here you now see an additional visualization that really shows the complex relationship of what we're looking for. And these are all really great views. You saw how kind of data was added, then filtered down. And here you can see kind of the connections and the relationships with all the different data types. Yeah, it's a super cool way of really pulling together the complexities of this, this query and allowing very easy personalization to simply click on the account and say, you know what, I want to also filter down on accounts that are preferred customers. So making it real easy for a marketeer to build a complex query based on a lot of different data sources to determine exactly who our target audience is going to be in this case. So very cool. So now kind of in the steps of marketing, we've generated a list. We've filtered out the people that we want. Now we can start thinking about ways to promote our event. Yep. So going to the next step, we're going to actually customize the email that we're going to communicate to our customer. So just like how we started the event, we have templates. And these templates can be optimized for something or for a particular purpose. In this case, I'll select purpose and I'm going to select event because we're going to actually conduct a, uh, an event to try to drive this uh, sales of this 3D printer. I can select a, a template that looks like it'll be uh, appropriately suited for this initial outreach to the customer. And in doing so, this now makes it very easy for the marketeer to actually get this content in the email and simply modify and configure the context to meet the specific need. Mm -hmm. 
So you see here we have kind of a predefined header that I, I can delete and using a simple drag and drop experience, select text and drag in a, a new header. And I'm gonna come into here and as soon as I type on that, you'll see a rich text editor, simple rich text editor. I can type welcome, I could do simple formatting. Again, very easy WYSIWYG style approach. But one thing to call out here is this appears to be just a text editor, but it also allows me to bring in dynamic fields from the database and throughout the common data service to really personalize this to make sure we really communicate uh, kind of on point with the customers based on what we're trying to get across. Like their first and last name or other, other details. Exactly. But once we've actually created this, we can actually get in and actually view the HTML and do more robust editing of the email template. But really, like any good marketer, I want to pre preview this and make sure it's going to show up well when it lands with the customer. So seeing the desktop, tablet, mobile experience, obviously with many uh, users really being mobile, mm -hmm. want to make sure it's optimized for how it's going to appear on their phone. So this design uh, actually looks great. So we're really ready to go. So this makes it very easy for the marketer to actually create and personalize that experience for how we're going to communicate to the actual customer. All right, so everything's staged and ready to go. You've got your list. You've got your email ready. Now you can start kicking off your campaign, right? Absolutely. So we take that beautiful email we just created and we blast it out. So once we actually send that email out, we have built in analytics within the system to pull that data back and allow us to see the performance of that email campaign. So here you'll see when I clicked on that email, we have KPIs such as delivered, open, clicked, uh, soft bounce, hard bounce, blocked, etc. But when I click on view details, I can drill deeper into that actual email to see more information, such as the response rate over time. Who did they open it? How many opens? The unique clicks, total clicks. If there's links embedded in the e email, the top 10 links and the performance of that, even where in the world people are actually clicking on this email. We're getting some great uptake in, uh, in Europe based on our event when we were over there last week. So that's fantastic. So this truly gives me a view of, of the performance. I can also drill into the delivery and see the delivery rate of this email. Because really, as a marketer, what's important is I want to make sure these emails are getting to my customers. So we see that you know, we're seeing actually a very high deliverability rate, which is great. But this is what I think is the coolest. We also bring in a heat map of the interactions with the email so we can see where customers are interacting with the content in this actual email. So super cool to see these insights. And we can see the, the most heat effectively on the register now button, which is the behavior that we're actually trying to drive. Perfect call to action if we're going to launch an event, right? We want to get people to the event. OK, so now you've got to actually start looking at the event itself. So does Dynamics 365 for marketing do anything to actually start managing that in-person event experience? It sure does. Within Dynamics 365 for Marketing, we have full event management capabilities. And because this is built on the same common data service, means it really is easy to create and qualify and pass marketing leads onto sales. So what you'll see is the same experience across our Dynamics apps. We can see the same guided process experience that allows me to show the, the flow of this campaign, the steps that need to be completed along the way. You can see we're still sitting in the early agenda stage. So if we look at the agenda, we can see the sessions, the session tracks, the speaker engagements, the sponsors, et cetera, capturing all this data and really organizing it from an organizational perspective. I can also track the registration, the financials, any post-event related aspects of this campaign. So really great to see all the kind of internal planning tools, but is there a way then that I can communicate to my audience kind of all the sessions and all the event stuff and all the different uh, activities they can do when they're on site? You got it. So here, this is the, uh, the portal. So once we've actually built that uh, event internally, we need to be able to execute it. So within Dynamics 365 for Marketing, we host that portal on behalf of the customers in Dynamics 365, all hosted in Azure to really give them the scale to blast this out as a public website so people can come and they can view the sessions and see the different types of sessions that are being offered. They can see the speakers. They can click register now and register. Once they do that, they'll actually get a login and be able to sign in, as you see here in the upper right corner, and authenticate into this portal and see their own and personalize their own experience to really uh, drive this particular event. So you've shown an event management experience, but what if I just want to run a simple, maybe an email campaign to capture web leads without kind of the expense and all the things that I have to do to run an in-person event? So there's two ways of doing this. Uh, the first is with LinkedIn. The second is creating a lead capture page that is hosted within Dynamics 365 portal, similar to the event registration site we just showed. So imagine creating a campaign that says, you know what, I want to uh, 
blast an email to my existing customers and send them to a, a web lead page to download some white papers. You can very easily create that web lead page, host it similar to how we just did with the, uh, the event registration portal, capture that data and automatically bring it in. But the beauty of this as a marketer and really as the sales handoff is bringing this data in because that's mm -hmm. the value of this, right? So I'm gonna come in and actually click on leads and let's open up Natalie here. So basic information on Natalie, who she is, but really what we want to point out here is in the bottom right corner, lead scores. So we have a rule-based scoring engine that allows us to define rules that say, you know, geographically or engagement or email-based and define scores for this particular lead. As you see here, very similar drag and drop experience, just like how we did the process designer earlier. And I can customize these leads and maybe weight them in different ways based on my own rules, right? Absolutely. So by dragging and dropping conditions and actions and assigning points, you can build a very robust scoring model because we want to make sure we're really focusing on the right leads. So really the beauty of this is beyond just the scoring, we can also see the insights that we've captured for the lead. Here, I can see the number of days that we've actually had this lead active and a timeline of all of the interactions, whether they've opened emails, whether they've uh, visited a website, whether they've submitted data on a form or visited a form, it's really all of those uh, interactions along the way. Is this all going to then funnel down into the sales databases so that we can actually use this and act against it as a seller? Absolutely. That's the beauty of all of this, right? This was uh, historically information that marketers had. Now imagine being a seller and seeing what they're visiting and what they're downloading and what they're interested in. Truly going to help a seller uh, really refine their view of what's going on. All right. So what we've seen here looked like it was pretty straightforward in terms of setting up the marketing sites and the emails. We kind of the outputs of all of this. We saw a lot of different Microsoft services, but what do I need to do if I'm in IT then to light all of this up? It's super easy. We have a wizard-based first-run experience to enable you to deploy the Dynamics 365 for marketing into your environment. So just like our other Dynamics 365-based services, this is all facilitated out of the Office 365 Admin Center. When I come into the Admin Center, I'm going to open up specifically the Dynamics 365 uh, Administration Center. And here, I can see all of the instances as well as the applications that I've deployed. Granted, this is my instance. I got a lot of, uh, a lot of orgs, so maybe not your, your, your typical customer in this example. But here, I'm going to select Dynamics 365 for marketing. And by simply clicking on managing this, this is going to initiate the first run experience. So we've put it into our, our, our tenant. Now we're going to configure this. So one of the first things I'm going to do is pause and create um, or define the Dynamics 365 organization that I'm going to connect to. What that means is we're taking marketing, and we just talked about how it, uh, it hooks directly into sales. Mm -hmm. This is going to give us that organization that Dynamics 365 for sales is running in to define that, that connection point between the and two. Kind of like you mentioned earlier, one thing to point out here is you can have multiple instances to one Office 365 tenant. So you can have them for different geographies, different departments. All that within the same kind of shared data set. That's exactly uh, one of that's a great reason exactly why we need to be able to give them the flexibility to define where do we want to be right. passing these leads. Exactly. Right. So the next step is, and we touched on this a little bit with the event portal, but we want to give the company the ability to create kind of their look and feel of the subdomain because we do host the portals uh, on, on their behalf. We capture the, the domain name MicrosoftCRMPortals.com, but we give the company the ability to personalize the, uh, the subdomain of that email or uh, I'm sorry, of that, uh, that domain name. So when I click on continue, this is uh, really uh, almost the end of the process. I now need to just simply come in and do uh, three consents, one to data sharing, one to the email marketing uh, templates, and one to the surveys. Again, we didn't show the surveys, but we do have what's called voice of the customer so we can send out and receive surveys. The data sharing really talks about that external database that is running in Azure that is capturing the throughput of all the data and all the emails click, capturing all of that as well as hooking into Dynamics, so consenting to the sharing of data across those. So really the last step that I need to take here uh, to wrap this up is to put my actual physical uh, sender, email, or sender address that's going to be included in all of our marketing communications. Click set up and the wizard is on its way. So a simple process is going to now take all of these uh, systems, connect and wire them up, and get them provisioned and ready to go. So this enables the Dynamics 365 for marketing and the integration into that office, uh, that, that sales application. And then once it's all done, it just lands me on this, uh, this landing screen where I can view a video, I can go straight into the application, or go back and review the, uh, the installation setup. And that finalizes the application, landing me right back in the ultimate Dynamics uh, 365 for marketing dashboard screen. 
So this looks really straightforward in terms of getting everything set up for IT and also for end users. Really, really great intro in terms of all the updates for Dynamics for marketing. And of course, you can check out our playlist on Dynamics 365 to really learn about how Dynamics 365 works under the hood. Now, with all the Dynamics 365 apps and experiences like Microsoft Relationship Sales, Connected Field Service, Talent, and Retail, where do you recommend people go to learn more? You can see this solution and more highlights of the Spring 2018 release on the Business Applications Virtual Launch event site or at the link shown below. Thank you, Eric. And also, don't forget to keep watching Microsoft Mechanics and subscribe to our channel and follow us on Twitter for the latest updates across Microsoft. That's all the time we have for today's show. Thank you for watching and goodbye for now.